Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, the globalists have stopped dead in the water, and they they don't know what to do right now because uh, you know there you see with the globalist agenda of wanting World War III in order to create the excuse for a new world order, they cannot, however, start it. They can't be looked as the blame of this thing. They've got to wait for Russia and China to do something. And now they've, they've been caught launching a giant proxy war, which makes them the villain. I mean, the average American may not know this, more and more do, but worldwide, everybody knows this has got to be, this is a devastating propaganda defeat. I mean, this has got to show the globalists that they're not invincible. Well, that's right. This, you know, I, I have never seen the globalists defeated until the one mistake by Kerry on the chemical weapons treatment of Syria. And now this, and this is much bigger because this is Russia actually intervening and directly thwarting the globalists in a very sophisticated way, uh, hedging their bets and being careful not to intervene too strongly. Um, uh, and I've just never seen the globalist agenda taken a step back until this last uh, three years and, and particularly this last week. What do you expect and, them to pull now, though, uh, to try to pull a rabbit out of a hat? Or will they lie low and just try to recalibrate? I think they have to let this play its course. You know, there's not much you can do once your your terrorist creation, ISIS, is now under the Russian gun. I mean, you can't go out and create a new terrorist force in the same area. Russians can attack that, too. I think they have to actually let it run its course, and that means that ISIS is going down. At best, they can work for a, a compromise replacement of Assad. Putin has said he's, he's uh, open to replacing Assad, but it has to be a democratic— But then they'll try to double-cross whoever that guy is. That's right. They'll try to double-cross that. But I don't see any quick solutions that the globalists could possibly come up with uh, that can change the dynamic as long as Russia is there. They're going to have to let us play its course. ISIS is probably going to go down over time, uh, or it may move into a different area, uh, but it's not going to go anywhere in Syria with the Russians there. What about that western area of Iraq they're holding, part of their IS kingdom? Do you think the, the Iraqis will be able to root them out of there? You know, they could change their base of operations to that Iraqi area. Um, uh, but, you know, if the Russians are smart, they'll make an alliance with the Kurds to go after those people, too. Um, they won't stop uh, within Syria itself. Um, I think the Russians could uh, make a lot of hay uh, by teaming up. They're already teaming up with some of the Iraqis. The Iraqis are tired of the U.S. limiting their ability to attack uh, ISIS. And the Iraqis, of course, know that. They saw heli U.S. helicopters resupplying ISIS during the Battle of Mosul. The U.S. Navy was prohibited from striking their parade down the street after the victory in Mosul. So, the, I mean, that's what blew the cover on the U.S. towards uh, its claim that they were fighting ISIS. Uh, I think this is probably going to take another two years to eliminate ISIS, and Russia's going to grow in stature. The one thing that's still going to bring down that could bring down uh, Russia in public esteem is that they continue their stealth war in in Ukraine. Uh, they may have to pull back on that in order to take advantage of this leadership advantage that they've gained in the war on terror. Um, what do you, you know, expect the globalists to do to punish people? I mean, who is to blame in the power structure when you got Kissinger pointing the finger at Obama? Obviously, when he this is part of his strategy, James Baker's strategy. Uh, the big Brzezinski strategy, the Rockefeller strategy, the big think tank Pentagon strategy, the neocon strategy. I mean, it's all a big consortium that came to these consensus. So how do they even reform themselves when they're all about never getting blamed for anything temporarily, but also spiritually? <laughs> Boy, you have some very complex questions you throw at me, Alex. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. How are they yeah. going to reform their new world order takeover when it's all about dodging responsibility? Yeah, I think the key is going to be electing a new team. You know, I think they're they're basically washing their hands of Obama and uh, the present team. They're going to reform under the new Republican leadership they're going to give us. Uh, if they can get George Bush elected or some other controlled Republican right now, you know, this election is in disarray. They promoted Trump in order to discredit his uncareful remarks about immigration, but the public loved it. They can't 
stop Trump, even though they keep saying his poll numbers are going down. They really aren't. Um, you know, Ben Carson, another uncontrolled candidate, is uh, uh, coming up uh, equal with uh, with Trump. Uh, I mean, the globalists have got three major defeats now at their hand, and they're really scrambling. Uh, but they need a Republican to take the mantle away from Obama to claim we're starting anew and let the conservatives get on board, but they'll be behind that Republican president guiding his neocon philosophy just as before. What is your gut? Also, you do deep research. What is your gut on Trump? What type of person he really is? Because obviously he knows that the establishment makes him more popular attacking him. Uh, that's what I told Rand Paul. And I told Politico, I said, if you Rand Paul, you want to win, you've got to be the underdog. You've got to be the outsider, not the guy that works with the system. Even though I respect and like Rand Paul, Trump obviously at a street level knows how to win. My only question is, does he work for Trump or does he work for the globalist? I don't think he works for the globalist, but I don't think he's um, principled enough. In fact, I'm sure he's not principled enough that he couldn't be controlled by the globalists if he were to get in. Now, I personally don't think that he would be good for the conservatives or the globalists because, one, for one, he won't read a script. He won't even write his own script and stick to it. He has to speak off the cuff. This shows a person that is very impatient He's a dramatic go-getter uh, who just doesn't have the patience to carefully write or uh, describe an argument and stick to it. Um, he's a bull in the china closet, and uh, he would be an embarrassment you know, to the United States uh, just because of the errors that he, he would say. But I have to say that Trump is basically right on the immigration policy. Uh, he's uh, okay on certain tax policy. He's a disaster on the Syrian policy, though. He's bought into the argument that Assad has to go because Assad uh, attacked his people with chemical weapons. And, of course, John Kerry came out with the barrel bomb thing about uh, Assad using barrel bombs on his own people, which is absolutely false. Um, you know, they only use barrel bombs on the other rebels, not on their own people. Uh, but it shows that the United States has continued to lie about Assad. And, unfortunately, Tom, uh, Trump did not pick up and did not do his research on this. Uh, I don't know how he can be so right on immigration and the illegal alien problem and be so off. Sure. Well, what do you think about his tax plan? Well, his tax plan, um, actually, I don't like any of these tax plans because they still do maintain the IRS. They still do have an income base. Even a flat tax does an income Exactly. Base. You just got to get rid of the income tax. It's unconstitutional. To the Communist Manifesto. Joel Skousen, stay there with us, my friend. I want to get to a few calls for you on the other side. Tanner, and who else has been holding the longest? Uh, Tom, Zach, a few others. We'll do five minutes in the next hour. And then we've got Leanne McAdoo with the whole fourth hour for you. WorldAffairsBrief.com, Joel Skousen's website. Please don't ever forget that they have mainstream establishment media lying about us almost every day on national television or in major papers. And it's because, for all my problems, this is teleprompter free. We really care about freedom. We care about America. We care about you. We care about ourselves. We care about family. We care about life. We care about the right to self-defense. And we're unifying people around basic survival. The globalists are bad news. And just like Hitler or just like any other tyrant in history, they get delusional and believe they're invincible. And they might just destroy all of us in the process. So the hubris is starting to run into some problems. Who knows what they're going to do? But we're going to see a lot of power grabbing, a lot of bizarre behavior now out of these people because they think they're invincible. And they think if they just double down, they're going to be okay. Now is the time for the maximum effort exposing tyranny, the maximum effort getting prepared, the maximum effort to be spreading the word. And to also go to Infowars.com, WorldAffairsBrief.com, and other sites that tell the truth and appreciate the fact that that press is there because there's a major Western move to restrict free speech at a bold level I've never seen. And that's because the system is desperate. Uh, I want to hit a few final co phone calls here with Joel Skousen, but I'm sure you've seen them 120 days in Germany for criticizing the immigrants, universities announcing that there's no free speech. It's, it's almost comical if it wasn't so serious how flaming totalitarian the so-called left is. So right as they get exposed, they seem to be lurching into an even bigger display 
of arrogance. Uh, have you seen that or what's your view on it? Yes, it's amazing to me how uh, uh, they've talked about rating people in terms of their reliability of free speech on the Internet and banning people who get a low rating. I mean, this is a recipe for disaster. People are up in arms and rebelling against that kind of restriction. I think, once again, as you said, the globalists are lurching and scrambling, uh, and they're going to make mistakes now. They haven't had a major setback in years. and all They've just been able to calculate plan and and devise conflict creation without any interference from anyone and suddenly it's all breaking down uh so this may just buy us more time and that's important for people's preparation the main threat that i keep worrying about is eventual war with russia and china that still is on the on the docket it's not real soon um i think uh, we're going to pass through this time without a major economic collapse uh uh, that people keep warning about. But historically, major powers are going to collide. All the demographics, all the graphs show that. That's right, without question. But it is further away than people think because Russia and China aren't ready yet. But remember, when that finally happens, you're going to get not only economic collapse, commensurate with that, an EMP strike, no electricity in the grid. If you think you need preparations, boy, when war comes, it's like nothing else. And when it comes, our entire civilization seems or uh, ceases to be like it is, and, and we lose all of our ability to make a living, and we go into a massive survival no mode against uh, total social unrest. So even though I have been decrying the hypesters, you know, who keep talking about this coming earlier and martial law coming earlier, when it does come, commensurate with war, it's going to be so serious that you've got to be ready. And we, we know it's coming because the elite all over the world, but especially here, are, as you know, huge programs, much bigger than the Manhattan Project, to harden bunkers, to go underground, to create alternative systems. I mean, there is a buildup much bigger than the Cold War going on at an accelerated speed. They're not doing that for nothing. Absolutely right. And they're not doing this because of terrorism. They know that a major nuclear strike is going to fall on the United States, that EMP will be here at some time. And that's why they're preparing these huge underground bunkers. That's why ex-CIA, FBI directors and other people are building, you know, bunkers underneath their resort homes in, in the Colorado Rockies. And Stay there. Area. Back in 70 seconds. We're going to jam in a few phone calls and overdrive, folks. A full hour. Leanne McAdoo. Joel Skousen is our guest. We've got to get him back much sooner. Stay with us. Some stations don't carry this next hour. Final segment I'm hosting. Leanne McAdoo coming up to cover a score of issues. We got loaded phone lines. If folks want to hold over, they can talk to McAdoo. She'd love to talk to you. Tanner from Texas, you're on the air. Speaking with Joel Skousen, the editor-in-chief of World Affairs Brief. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I had a question. Uh, seems like every time you bring up 9-11, you mentioned that uh, that so all you say is that Saudi Arabia did 9-11. But that I mean, not what I said. You know, well, I mean, over the last six months, that's all you say. You know, you say 9-11, and then you say Saudi Arabia did 9-11, Saudi Arabia quarterback 9-11. My thing is, you know, with all this stuff with World Trade Center 7, with the BBC, you know, predicting it and then cutting the feet off before the building could be seen collapsing behind her. And Hold on just a second. You know I broke all that and popularized that, and I made like five films on it, and I said there's shadowy groups in the government that stood down and clearly were involved. We've said that just ad nauseum. I'm hammering to get the 28 pages out because if you expose the Saudi involvement, then you expose their collaborators. So my point is I've declared victory in the fact that those of us that said it was an inside job were right because if our government knew and stood down, that's just as much as involved as if they loaded bombs in the buildings. I want to get Joel Skousen's take on who he thinks is involved. I'm not going to debate that I'm covering up 9-11 when I'm – I'm not going to brag, folks, but I'm the guy that first said it. I'm the guy that put my name on the line, lost almost all my affiliates, everything exposing it. And then people say I'm not exposing it. It's like people call up and say, why don't you talk about the Federal Reserve, you know, being private? I, I'm just, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, and I'm not mad at you, Tanner. Uh, go ahead. You got 30 seconds. Then Joel Skousen can comment. Well, I can just say that from an outsider's perspective, listening to a radio show, it just sounds like somebody's trying to point our military at the world's largest oil reserve. It just doesn't seem like, you know, like you really believe that the Saudi Arabia's rigged up the buildings with TNT or, and that you really believe they fed the script <laughs> to the BBC. I don't think you believe any of that. Uh, Saudi Arabia was heavily involved in 9-11 with a bunch of other Western governments that I've made films and named them. 